We need it bad. Okay. You did this story. You tell yeah. me about the story here. Okay. One of the things that uh, one of the things that's going on out there are education programs, mm -hmm. certainly teachers teaching young people, but also young people teaching young people about the hazards of drugs. And that's what we're going to see? This is a program in West Seneca. You've heard of peer counseling. Let's take a look in West Seneca at how it works in action. And you all know that it, it, there's so many bad things to drugs and alcohol, but if you're afraid to say no, or you're worried about how to say no, this is, this is a way to show you how to say no. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. How's it going, Eva? Oh, not bad. Hey, I'm having a party this week. Anyone come? Sure. You gotta bring your own, though. Bring your own what? Bring your own alcohol. Hey, if you have any problem whatsoever, just ask me. You know, it's no problem for me to get it. Everyone's gonna be there. It's gonna be a really good time. I don't, I don't know. There's gonna be alcohol there? Yeah, of course. Okay, guys. Now, let's help out Dave. What should he do? Should he drink? No. 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 Why? What are some reasons that he shouldn't drink? It slows down your nervous system. Right. Mm -hmm. Why do, what, what kind of drug is it? It's a depressant. Mm -hmm. You don't, a lot of people think that, you know, they drink at parties to have a good time, but that's wrong because it really, it slows you down and it brings you down, it depresses you. And if you have a problem, it only makes your problem worse when you get, when you get done from being drunk. If he goes to this party and drinks, then he could tell another friend to drink and then that friend will tell another friend and it just, it'll go on along in a chain. Right. You and it's going to be his fault for going on and telling other friends to drink. That's good because what he's going to do is he doesn't want to take the guilt himself, so he's going to try and peer pressure other people into it. Yeah? Because you get addicted. Right. Okay. right Anybody right. know what, exactly what addiction is? Do you know a definition for it? Well, you get hooked on something and you can't stop doing it. And, and like, you can't stop drinking or anything yeah, if you want more, right? Yeah. Does anybody know what the the term for addiction to alcohol is? Alcoholic. That's oh, one with the actual oh, word for good. it. Yeah. It's alcoholism. alcoholism. And it's a disease that a lot of people suffer from and it could destroy some families and it could also cause a lot of disruption among friends too. People don't think that because alcohol isn't, isn't really popularly um, classified as a drug that it's not addictive but it's wrong because it's very addictive. Just it is as, a drug. Just as much as any it's other true. drug is. Programs such as this confront one of the grim realities of drug and alcohol abuse, and that is it often begins in junior high or even grade school. And who better to teach about the hazards than another young person? We can express ourselves more freely than teachers can, and it's, it's, I think they'd rather hear it from us than teachers. Because it's from us, from people who, you know, their peers, it's not as much, you know, reprimanding them and and telling them what to do. It's just listening to them and understanding them. Whereas a teacher, you know, they'd get, they'd get a different idea, I think. West Seneca's peer counseling program is now in its 10th year. It's success hinging on the volunteers' enthusiasm. Good. You want elementary students to look at some really good students and say, hey, you know, Dave is a great guy and, and Dave doesn't do drugs. Hey, I don't need to do drugs either. So what do you think? You want to come or no? Mm, I don't think so. I don't really drink. You can still come and not drink. I mean, everyone's going to be there. No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to stay on time. All right, well, then I guess I'll just see you around, all right? All right. All right. Intriguing concept, isn't it? So oftentimes we hear how kids learn about drugs from other kids. Why not? learn about the hazards of drugs from other kids. Let's talk right now to Amy Malloy, who is one of the peer counselors you saw on the videotape, and the moderator of the program, Carol Sticka. Amy, how did you get involved in this, and why? Well, last year, um, the, the peer counselor moderator came to our, came to our study house and asked us we, if we were interested in becoming a peer counselor. And we didn't really know. It was first that I, I heard of it. And she came, and we had to we had to go through an interview, and you know we had to sign forms to say, you know, we were drug free, alcohol free, sure. and then we went down to the junior high and we just we we taught the kids, we educated them. Are they tough? No, they're fun. Are they? Yeah. This is a cooperative effort between the school and the town. Tell me a little bit about that. How did that come about? It, it really is a unique um, effort in that it's it's the town, the Drug Abuse Prevention Council, which is part of the town 
um, works in cooperation with the Board of Education in the schools, and we put together this program. The members on the council are um, Joan Lewis, the West Seneca Town Supervisor, um, Marge Davies, who is the chairman of the Board of Education, people like that, and we just, we meet every couple of months and we talk about what's happening with our program and it works closely with the town and the government, the schools. One of the things I was curious about when I was watching it the other day, the kids were very responsive, but I wonder, does this stay with them? Do you have that feeling? Or are they listening to you just for now or are they actually coming away with something? No, I really think they are. I mean, even last year, a lot of kids asked me how they could become peer counselors because they were so interested in this and they said that, you know, it affected them so strongly that they wanted to do what I was doing and that was to help other kids. It's just kids helping kids. What do you look for in a young person when you're recruiting them as a counselor? When I'm interviewing with them? Yeah. Um, somebody who's bright, somebody who's really enthusiastic, who really feels that drugs are a major part of a problem in our life and they're against it completely. Amy has been wonderful. She is, she's bright, she's enthusiastic, she is ambitious, and th these, these, this is what I look for. Well, you have a wonderful program there. It and is. As, if they don't have a program like this in your school, they might consider starting one. Right. Thank you both so Thank much. Thank you. And now let's head back to Barry, who's at the phones. Barry? Here, we're going to give you to somebody else just for a moment there. This is, ladies and gentlemen, let's look in the camera straight ahead. This is Lou St. James here of WBLK Radio. Say hi, Lou. <laughs> hi, Lou. Now, Lou looks like a movie star out of a 1941 movie, doesn't he? Huh? It's better than 1935. How come you're not on television? <laughs> huh? I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. see, they're doing my makeup with caulking stuff anymore, and then you should be on television. Maybe, you, were, yeah. you were on with you for yes, a while. Yes, for a yeah. while. For well, a it's good to see you, and you had me on the radio as your guest. And it was a pleasure to have him on. Uh, we were on together Wednesday morning. Yeah. And I just want to urge all the listeners and our viewers here this evening to make that contribution so that we can fight the uh, war against...